This video illustrates the final concept in Bruce Tuckman's Chapter 2, Assigned to FRM Candidates, which is about the relationship between maturity and bond price. And it's contrary to what we learn about pull to par. Pull to par is probably familiar to you if you're studying fixed income. It's illustrated right here with a bond that has a coupon of 9% and the yield is 5%. When the coupon equals the yield, the bond prices to par. When the coupon is higher than the yield, the bond prices at a premium, as it does here. At two and a half years, specifically, the price is $109.29. So here we are at the red dot. Pull to par means that as this bond matures, its coupon being higher than its yield, the bond price is pulling to par. In this case, for a premium bond, that means the bond price is decreasing. Here's par at 100. Well, pull to par assumes the yield is constant, right? In this pull to par scenario, the 5% yield is unchanged. So implicitly or explicitly, the assumption is unchanged yield. Well, this concept that I'm going to show you here, based on the end of Bruce Tuckman's chapter two, has a different assumption. It's an assumption that the term structure is unchanged. And so we can interpret that to mean that the spot rates or equivalently the embedded forward rates, that term structure of forward rates is unchanged as the bond matures. And we'll see that the bond pricing to par is not the rule. The bond is going to increase, increase in price, and then decrease and decrease in price. And we'll see exactly what that rule is. So I have here Bruce Tuckman's Table 2.1. That's in his third edition. This is assigned to FRM candidates. My table is transposed, so the timeline is horizontal. And we're mostly, for this purpose here, just interested in the swap rate curve that's highlighted in yellow, and specifically the 2.5 or 2.5 year swap rate, which in this scenario happens to be 1.4450%. So that we know by definition of the swap rate that a 2.5 year bond with this as a coupon, with the swap rate as a coupon rate, would price exactly to par. Right, That's why this 100 is here. But I'll just re-enter it to make sure that we're clear on the math here. If I wanted to compute the present value of a bond that pays this as this swap rate as a coupon, right? I would just go over to, I would take the coupon, multiply by the face value. I'm going to divide by 2 because it's paid semi-annually, right? So that's what I'm, that's the cash flow that I'm getting every six months. And then I'm gonna multiply that by the discount function or the summation of the discount factors. Because in doing that, I'm multiplying each of the cash flows by a respective discount factor. So I'm computing here the present value of the stream of future coupon cash flows, but I haven't yet included the final uh, return of principal, right? So that's the par value multiplied by my 2.5 year discount factor. So you see how this function gives me the present value of this bond if it pays a coupon rate of 1.445% per annum, and I get $100. And so it's the same with each of these prices. And below here, I've plotted the forward rate curve that's implied actually by the swap rate curve. So in our previous video, we already showed that it's redundant. We only need the swap rate curve, and then we can infer discount factor, spot rates, and the forward rate. So it's not a separate set of assumptions. The forward rate is in fact implied by the swap rate curve, and I've plotted it here. In yellow, I have the 2.5 year swap rate, and I've just represented as a horizontal line across the timeline. Okay, so the point here that Bruce Tuckman has made is, what can we say about the price of this swap, or equivalently, this bond that pays a coupon rate as it matures? That means chronologically as we march through time. 
has mentioned there's an important assumption that we need to make about the term structure, and that is it's static or unchanged. So the assumption here is unchanged term structure. It's very important to specify that, right? Because there are different assumptions. We can't necessarily assume that the term structure will be static or unchanged. After all, we could have realized forwards. And this is different than assu assuming that the yield is unchanged. We're assuming that as we go from two and a half years to two years, that same term structure is represented by the forward rates or the spot rates is static. And then the question becomes, what happens to the price? And you can see here, this is not a pull to par situation. It's already at par. It's increasing in price. How do we explain that? The way that Tuckman explains it, which I like, is starting in the reverse direction, like not reverse chronologically, so to speak. If we start here at the price of the six-month bond, it's $100.37. And then we ask, what happens if we extend the maturity from six months to one year? And as Tuckman said, well, both the the swap pays 1.445% as we extend six months, but that's better than the forward rate, right? And that's the market rate on the additional six months. So if we extend the six-month bond to one year under a bond with a coupon rate that's higher than the forward rate, the price goes up. I think it, I think it uh, agree with his explanation in understanding intuition going this direction, the opposite of chronological. So similarly, here we are at one year, this bond paying a coupon at the swap rate is has a price of 100.57. Well, again, this bond paying the 2.5 year swap rate, right? That's why it's not at par. As we ask, let's extend that another six months. If we extend it, at the two and a half year swap rate, which is 1.445%, we're getting the higher rate on that extension than the market rate is as given by the forward. Price goes up. And again, from one and a half years to two years, now that extension here on the two and a half year swap rate is less than the market rate. So the price goes down. And then finally, going from two to two and a half years, extending at the swap rate of 1.445% is less than the market rate of 2.3%. Price goes down, in fact, to par. And so now we have the criteria. The cri and the criteria is let's go at, let's start at two and a half years. We have a two and a half year bond or swap if you like. And now we're going to let it mature, go from two and a half years to two years. And we can see that the price goes up, and that's because the fixed swap rate of 1.445% is less than the market forward rate that is expiring. And so this is the test. How does the fixed swap rate, it's going to be the same as we march through time, how does it compare to the expiring forward rate? If it's less than, the price goes up. So now we're at two years and we're going to mature another six months, go to one and a half years. It's again a comparison. The fixed rate of 1.445% is less than the expiring market forward rate. Price goes up. How about at one and a half years? I'm going to draw this down to represent that we're going a decrease in price as we go as we mature from one and a half years to one year, the fixed swap rate is greater than the expiring forward rate. So the price goes down. And finally, similarly, as we go from, as we mature from one year to six months, the fixed swap rate is greater than the expiring market forward rate. The price goes down. And so that's the test. I hope that's a helpful video. If you, uh, if you did find the video helpful, please subscribe to the channel. And so you'll get the notifications for them, my next videos. Thank you.